the hell happened to you? I just randomly lost my voice. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is fucking cursed. The fuck was that? So that wasn't just me. You were hearing that too? Uh, yeah, I heard it too. The, do you have any idea what the fuck that was? I had, No, I don't even know where we heard it from. It sounded like it, he was just so mediocre. I don't know what to make of it. I know. It's about as boring as a Josh Trank film. Damn. <laughs> Welcome to the Ruby Expertise. I'm Jeff. And I'm Ron. And this is take two of this episode. I no longer sound like I'm in the back room making a sandwich. Maybe we should have gone with that recording. <laughs> but yeah, what you heard was, you know what we think our mediocre podcast needs? A mediocre intro theme song. Damn yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Last week's episode, we recorded fairly early, recorded on a Monday, so it means we had some more news pushed into this week's episode. So we have not so much in the TV and gaming news department, but quite a bit of movie news, and also you will be getting a... Very, very, very quick lightning round Fantastic Four review from Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First up in the movie news, Ron, will you please? Shame. Shame. That's right. Special correspondent from Game of Thrones. We need to figure out what that lady's name is. We really do. It's just Bell Lady from Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ron. In a two-week span, we not only had... A Space Jam sequel announced. Okay. We had a Jumanji reboot announced. Okay, painful. And a reboot of Nightmare on Elm Street's reboot. <sighs> That's ridiculous, dude. All right, first off, Jumanji, how do you... Do we, who the hell do you... How do you do that without Robin Williams? Dude, it's like it's really funny. You know, like a couple weeks ago we reported on the Aladdin thing? Yeah. Why are they, after Robin Williams has passed, trying to get all this shit off the ground? I don't going to reboot it. Mrs. Doubtfire with Martin Lawrence. Don't you, put, <laughs> don't you put that shit out there? Don't you put that shit out there, Ron? That, if that happens, that's on you, motherfucker. Okay, yeah. Uh, have we reported on the Space Jam thing yet? Yes, that we was did. last episode. Okay, that was last week's episode. Okay, I mean, shit. I only oh, we, we we played Shame for that too. If we I did. Recall. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Okay, fucking Jumanji, Jesus Christ, Hollywood, for fuck's sake. I don't understand. Every episode, at some point, we bitch about Hollywood because they deserve it for because of this shit like that. But really, Jumanji... I'm, I'm getting really sick of the word reboot. You know, And why can't Jumanji stand on its own? It's a great film, but, I mean, why the fuck do we need to remake it? Of all the things that they could remake... How much of our childhood... Has been destroyed? I mean... Okay, um... Michael Bay has a personal vendetta against me, from what I can see. Uh, goosebumps, that's being just destroyed. And not only that, in the worst fucking way. So, Like, Space it's Jam- not even a Goosebumps movie. It's, like, a movie about it was haunted Goosebumps. Mansion. It was Haunted Mansion starring R.L. Stein. Yes. Pretty much. It's like, what the fuck is this shit? Okay, so... Goosebumps, Space Jam, Jumanji, like, all the shit from the 90s. Just getting... Yeah just horribly, horribly destroyed on screen. It's just sad. I never saw the reboot of The Nightmare on Elm Street. I wanted to because it had Rorschach. Exactly. Uh, Movie wasn't that great, but he was a really cool Freddy, at least to me. Mm -hmm. Now, what he was not is he was not, you know, uh, Robert England, I believe, was the original Freddy. You know, obviously... He's not going to be able to do better than that or come close to it because that's an iconic role. Yeah. But in a kind of more... Because like what happened with the Elm Street movies was... Uh, and this is totally lightning round. <laughs> in the original Nightmare on Elm Street film... Okay, in the original uh, Elm Street movies, it went like campy over time, right? You know, yeah. He ended up being more jokey than menacing. So what they did was they actually did a reboot. You know, They made it more dark. They uh, took a different approach to it. It wasn't campy. And I thought the Rorschach actor, uh, Jackie Hurl Ailey, who was mm-hmm. an awesome actor, actually did a good job. But well, that came, I think it came out in like oh nine. So, you know, five, six years, they're already rebooting it again. It's like, Jesus freaking Christ. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's depressing. Speaking of other things which may or may not be a train wreck, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> Beetlejuice 2 is look. It's looking like it's going to be a thing for sure because on Late Night with Seth Meyers, Winona Ryder, famously one of the leads of the original Beetlejuice, Lydia, 
she announced Beetlejuice 2 is happening. Uh, Seth Meyers was kind of, kind of shocked. He, he was along the lines of, you sure you can make that announcement? <laughs> and Renona Ryder was saying, eh, Tim Burton kind of announced already. I don't give a shit. It's happening. So, With you nationality, he said it may or may not be happening. He never said it was. So I like Beetlejuice, but I am not one of the more diehard fans. You appear to be more into it than I am. What are your thoughts on a Beetlejuice sequel? I think it's about time. I mean... It doesn't piss me off. It's not. I think they've waited too long. I think at this point, if you're going to do Beetlejuice, you might as well fucking reboot it if you're going to do it because it's been so long. Kind of like uh, the sequel to Sin City. I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah, like by the time the sequel came out, it didn't do very well because everybody lost interest because they waited too long. Maybe you should, you know, but, not wait nine years or ten years to make. But a movie. Michael Keaton said if Tim Burton's coming back, he's all for doing it again. He's been wanting to do another Beetlejuice, so So you are happy that it is a sequel, not a reboot. I am. But I don't think it's gonna do very well because anyone that knows anything about Beetlejuice is probably not going to have any interest. Dude, uh can I you watched imagine? the movie and then I grew up with the cartoon. So we've we've talked numerous times about how Hugh Jackman, you know, is Wolverine. Recasting Beetlejuice would be a bitch. Good fucking luck. Who the I couldn't even begin to imagine who you would recast because that that he's more iconic for that to me than Batman. You know, he yeah. is Beetlejuice. Yeah, mostly because even even the cartoon Beetlejuice was even looked like the Michael Keaton character. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I think it's mainly because it was its own thing. You yeah. know, he you know with Batman, he was an iconic Batman. You know, the first serious Batman, but there's yeah. been tons and tons of other Batman interpretations. You know, Beetlejuice is Beetlejuice. You know, yeah. you can't touch that. So yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's not being rebooted too. I'm yeah. So I mean. I think it'll be interesting. I think it's about fucking time. I think it did good enough the first time it should have. I don't know why it didn't, but I don't know. When did Beetlejuice come out? Was that 86? It was like mid to late 80s? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, it was. Uh, I know it was a little before my time where I could really sink into it because I was... Oh, was fucking mind-blowing for me. Uh, let's see. Beetle. Juice. <laughs> I typed that into IMDb. The first hit's Beetlejuice. The second hit was Beetlejuice 2 with one owner rider. <laughs> and no one else listed. It's a one woman show. <laughs> uh, 1988. I'd have been three when it came out. I was negative three. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's 7.4 on IMDb. That's pretty generous for them. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh,. My whole thing was, you know, I have my reservation with Tim Burton. Yeah. But I adore Michael Keaton. So if Michael Keaton's back on board, I'm all, I'm down for it. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely. I have the original. We should watch it again. For sure. For the sure. original. Need- because there is any <laughs> other. <laughs> I have the first one. Well, I mean, it's easy to make that mistake when every fucking thing has a reboot. It's, yeah, it's, you should be, pretty much just assume you, now. You assume, I mean, for fuck's sake, they're rebooting reboots now. So. Uh, here's my question. How long until we get reboots of Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter? I don't know. Because you know what's going to happen. I know it is, yeah. As soon as... When what Hollywood really needs is a fucking reboot of Transformers. Yeah, the shit that needs to be rebooted never is. Yeah, Michael Bay still is somehow allowed to assist with making a Transformers Michael film. Michael Bay needs to be kept as far away from fucking Hollywood as he can keep him. But all you all you gotta do is stick him on an island with some M80s. He'll entertain himself, <laughs> and he doesn't have to torture us with his you know films anymore. So I'm just so. I'm just throwing that out there. But uh, we had some other interesting film news, and that was that. Devil in the White City is a production upcoming for Martin Scorsese starring Leonardo DiCaprio. And Ron is going to read off some of the descriptions of this because this sounded freaking amazing to me. I wanted to add it to the news because of it. Um, let's see. It, da, 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 Martin Scorsese, Leonardo, Leonardo, blah, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, filmed at, it's, apparently it's a book adapted from Eric Larson's The Devil in the White City, Murder, Magic, and Madness at the Fair that Changed America. That's that a, is a long that's ass. That's a subtle title. <laughs> that is a long ass book title. Um, but I'll tell you, according to Deadline, 
Uh, da, 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 da. DiCaprio's the lead role. Scorsese directing. We could have guessed that already. Uh, here we go. DiCaprio is playing H.H. H. Holmes, a 19th century serial killer believed to have murdered anywhere between 27 to 200 people while Chicago was hosting the World's Fair of 1893. I'm on board. It sounds incredible. I, I had never heard of this It sounds book. better than the book title. I, I fell asleep reading the book title. <laughs> It was just because of how long it was. Was it the book title or was it because it was part of our podcast? No, it's because the book title is about as long as War and Peace. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, one of the best actors, I think, going currently. And I love Scorsese's stuff. Scorsese, you know, even when Scorsese makes a bad movie, it's a good movie to someone uh, else's standards. Yeah, you know? pretty much. And I think that can be true about a lot of things, though, Jeff. The... Uh, the, the just the fact that he's getting to play a serial killer. Yes. I've never seen DiCaprio. Go- well, he's at this point he's Keanu Reeves, right? From The Watcher. I mean, you could say that the. Uh, I mean, just the the setting is so cool. The Chicago World Fair of the eighteen nineties. It just sounds such. There's just something about Leonardo DiCaprio. He fits into that kind of time period. It seems like. And uh, we also need to give him props. He's the only American actor that can do. F- uh, European accents worth a damn. Yeah, and he does them really well. Blood Diamond, his South African accent is fantastic. That was a good movie. We we need to watch that movie again. Yeah, too. it was do. amazing. So we, yeah, we're looking forward to this. No release dates or anything. I think it was just announced mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks. But speaking of possible Harry Potter reboots, there's a spinoff in the works. Um, I guess you could say they fucking hit the bullseye when they got Colin Farrell. I want to cue up the shame so bad. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, come on. You you, you get the puns every time. You get the bell. Uh, yeah, yeah. You play with the puns, you get Puntastic. the bell. Fantastic. I know. Yeah, okay. Colin Farrell has joined the Harry Potter spinoff. I don't even... I don't know how I feel about even calling this a spinoff. It's a very weird area yeah, you are more familiar with this than I am, and neither one of us well, are diehard Harry Potter. I'm fans. only familiar with it because my wife is a Harry Potter that fan. Is, that equals more familiarity than I have with this. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he's being cast as Graves, a wizard who meets the Magizoologist, ma- Magizoologist Newt Scamander, played by Eddie Redmayne. It says um, that the coolest thing this has going forward is really, really great cast. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and uh, I don't think we actually said the name of it. The Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Which sounds to me like a lot like the sequel to Where the Wild Things Are, just in the title. Um, but where are they? Well, here's where you find the Fantastic Beasts. So, we were talking earlier off, Mike. This is based on a story that's in the book Hermione has. I'm almost positive. Yeah, okay. That, yes. so, yeah, don't... I mean, no, no one's listening to this. But don't destroy us for having a Harry Potter facts wrong. Because we are admitting to the fact that neither one of us knows what the fuck we're talking about. Twenty. I don't know what this is. Episode 22, 23, and then our YouTube videos. We have one comment on anything. <laughs> just a single comment. So I don't think anyone's going to destroy and that, us. That may or may not have been wrong on an alternate account. Oh. I'm not sure. <laughs> But uh, not, in addition to Colin Farrell, Eddie Redmayne, uh, famous for playing Stephen Hawking in Theory of Everything, very, very good movie, very good performance. Also in it, I noticed Ezra Miller, who was in Perks of Being Wallflower and is your Flash in the DC Cinematic Universe. Okay. So this and, has a lot of good people going in it. And Perks of Being a Wallflower, that also had Hermione in it, right? Yep. Yep. Oh, that's fitting. That's very fitting. She might she might even had a hand to get them in there if you know she became friends with them yeah through making person being wallflower but yeah I mean it's Harry I like Harry Potter it's gonna make a billion dollars just yeah, because it's the, Harry sh- Potter shit because you know you think they're gonna put like the Star Wars thing like Harry Potter colon <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wouldn't blame them if they did because right. I mean you could put if you put Harry Potter colon Josh Trank's Fantastic Four <laughs> it's gonna make a hundred million dollars yeah. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, so yeah, looking forward to this. Uh, Colin Farrell, awesome as always. A lot of people give him shit for, you made the bullseye joke. (laughs) I still like Colin Farrell. I thought he was over the top. Didn't even find him that bad in that movie. I I hope this does well, because he has taken a lot of shit for things that he's done, and and especially recently for uh, the Total Recall remake. I never saw that. How was that? I, I haven't actually seen the original. It, like it was directed by Josh Trank. 
that bad? <laughs> Damn. It, okay, here's the thing. I liked the first half pretty good. That's where all the action sequences are. So it gets very slow. Have you ever seen, like, uh, there's an anime movie that I know you haven't seen sticking out in the forefront of my mind, but there's a lot of stuff that's in, like, uh, anime or other animated things they like to do when it's two parts that they put all of the attention-grabbing shit in the first part so that you'll buy the second part, and the second part's just boring as fuck. Um... that's basically the way that movie is. Everything that you wanted to see out of that movie is in the first half. And then after uh, Total Recall, the whole mystery is: is it real or is it an implanted memory? Right. That's the whole premise of the book, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Are you going to be spoiling it, or we need to call spoilers on it? Yeah, we could call spoilers on the movie that no one saw um, <laughs> and probably doesn't plan to see. But I mean, Kate Beckinsale and Colin Farrell, come on, and you. Fucked it up. Who made that? I'm gonna say. You know I, what? I don't, I don't even care. I'm blaming Fox. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's my major beef with it. Okay, I don't have to have action in an action movie for it to be great. Okay, but what really fucked it up for me is in the first half of the movie, it's all you know. Is it real? Is it not real? And then there's a bunch of action sequences, and then further stuff that's like, well, I don't know what that means. Does the, is it real or not real? And then in the second half of the movie, they just it's like they changed writers. They just totally fucking abandoned everything that was done in the so, first. Yeah, half. so the nothing gets tied up. And nothing gets tied up, and uh, you just like you're about three quarters of the way through. You're like, oh, I guess I guess it's real. Then I don't know. They never really touched that's on just, it. That's just so and, Yeah, <laughs> like everything that they worked so hard for in the first half, they just totally fucking ignore it in the second half and that really bothered me uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger one you really fucking say what you will about Arnold Schwarzenegger or the original Total Recall or what you really fucking don't know what's going on in that movie until they finally just fucking tell you so I need to get around to watching I, th- I think I might have watched the original you send me the meme enough tell me you've seen it I actually have I haven't seen the original really if, if I have seen the original I was too young to remember it I have it too I, I, we just need to have a movie day Jeff we don't have time. We haven't we're, seen the losers yet either. We're, yeah, yeah, we're too busy recording mediocre entertainment. I know so. it's becoming work every time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, clocking in. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I really hope this works out for him because even though the movie itself lost me, he was still really good. At yeah, it. Uh, True Detective season two. I don't like portions of the True Detective season two. He's been amazing in every episode. He's always yeah. fantastic. Fantastic Beast. I see. Yeah. I should be his publicist. <laughs> I'm getting them shit done. You know? Now you're doing the puns, motherfucker. I see. I my the the difference is my puns are unintentional. Your <laughs> puns get the shame. Belt. So you say. I am not clever enough to be able to plan such perfect. <laughs> that was puns. a mic drop. <laughs> I don't know. That landed not, in my hand, so I don't know if that was allowed. But not an right. earned one. <laughs> <laughs> And we had uh, in other spinoff news. This was actually a spinoff we're looking forward to. Maybe the only one, other than Harry Potter. I don't know either one of these names, though. Okay, so we're talking about the younger Han Solo film that the Lego Movie dudes are making. Chris, which already sounds fantastic. It's I get their names mixed up, but it's Miller and Lord. I get their first names mixed up. <laughs> okay, I think it's Chris Miller and Phil Lord. Could be mixing them up. We'll find out later. No one listens to no anyway. one listens. The people you don't recognize are Lawrence Kasdan. Uh, you dropped a little bit in the geek rankings because <laughs> Lawrence Kasdan wrote Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Okay. Him and his son, I have no knowledge of his son, but I mean, if he, he's, his, he's Lawrence Kasdan's kid. Yeah. And he's, you know, Disney isn't fucking around with Star Wars no. at all, even a little bit. Yeah. Like Josh Trank originally was attached to do one. Bye bye. They're not fucking around. <laughs> Not even joking, that actually happened. <laughs> uh, so, they are writing the young Han Solo film, which is incredible news. Uh, if you weren't aware, Lawrence Kasdan is also writing episode 7 with J.J. Okay. Or, you know, I'm assuming it's already... I hope it's already written. I hope it's already written. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that shit comes out in December. That script better be finished. But, yeah... Uh, I don't know what you thought about this, but I think the best Han Solo moments came from Empire and Jedi. So I think to have the, him and his kid working on the young Sol- Han Solo movie, I uh-huh. think is really, really great news. 
Because I mean, not even just. Well, I like the continuity of the same writer. You know, a writer from that worked on original Star Wars, working on especially oh, a part of the original trilogy, I should say. Especially when outside of a New Hope a new trilogy, outside of a New Hope, which was all George Lucas. Yeah, Empire and Jedi didn't fall off the rails. It, it's looking like a big part of that might have been Lawrence Kasdan, because as soon as George Lucas got back to doing it by himself, he lost his goddamn mind. Yeah. So you know, this could be, and everything we've seen in Episode Seven looks. I mean, it's trailers, but it looks really fucking cool. So here's to hoping that. This isn't fucked up because Young Han Solo movie, it's going to make a billion dollars anyway because it's Star Wars. Right. But to know that they're, you know, putting Lawrence Kasdan on it, you know, they're they're not taking the solo films lightly either. They're putting emphasis on everything, make it all you good. You don't fucking r- throw out a chunk of change for Star Wars and take it lightly, so. Exactly. They... Who knows how much they pay to get all that? Yeah, I don't, I don't, if it was ever released, I never saw. I want to know how much was paid uh, for Star Wars and for all the Marvel shit. Uh, especially, it's like only Disney can afford those <laughs> two paychecks. Do they even make Disney movies anymore? Is I, it all Star Wars and Marvel? Actually, I think I think the number for Star Wars was announced because I want to say uh, George Lucas took the the proceeds and donated it all, which was really cool of him. Which I make no, fun of him. I thought I thought he was hurting for cash. I don't know. No, like, I thought you were kidding. No, it's George Lucas. No, dude. I thought he was hurting for gas. No, no, no. If you didn't know, um, okay, I, we, we say we're going to lightning round. Here's another little <laughs> fun fact, backstory for you. The more After you know. Empire Strikes Back, super dark, right? Yeah. In between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, yeah. George Lucas signs a deal with Fox. Yeah. Jo- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking hate you, Ron. <laughs> George Lucas signs away proceeds uh, from the movies. And you know what he signs into to get money back from? Merchandise. So, <laughs> Merchandise. So, so guess what's in Return of the Jedi? Little fucking teddy bears. <laughs> <laughs> merchandising, merchandising, Another fun merchandising. Fact, the word Ewok is not said in Return of the Jedi. The right. only reason you know that is because of the merchandise. <laughs> so, yeah. George Lucas... Wiping his ass with hundred dollar bills, dude. <laughs> he prints money just to wipe his ass with it. So um, uh, that's, that's actually that was the last of the kind of general movie news. So speaking of Disney owned properties, we're going to segue over into superhero movie news. And first up was we got some half assed pictures of Black Panther, <laughs> and you get some awesome looks of everything that doesn't really give you a look of what the, the suit. is. Actually, looks like. Yep. There's. I, I encourage everyone to go uh, look at these photos, just because of the face Anthony Mackie's making in half of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he is completely unflattered and not very happy about some of these photos. But um, yeah, Black Panther costume. What you can see from that distance away, and, and they never the get side, a front view. Yeah, until he's not wearing the mask. Yeah. Um, great camera work guys jeff enjoys frontals he enjoys front views do you not (laughs) (laughs) no um i don't know it looks pretty good it looks a lot like the concept art that was circulating a while back i i like how uh they're continuing to just kind of take shit off the page because that black panther she was really faithful and if you look at the comic that'd be one that'd be kind of yeah that's kind of hard to translate but they I mean, from what the, I didn't expect was the concept art was kind of smooth and kind of like sleek, unitard looking, you know, which works on the comic book page. What I didn't expect to see that I kind of liked about it was I'm not in any way comparing it to Batman, but I like that it was kind of plated like Batman in places, you know, like he, like on the legs and stuff. And it looks like he can take a hit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it doesn't look like he just you know unfolded a piece of spandex and stretched it over himself and jumped off a rooftop. I'm incredibly curious about how they're going to make all 3,000 characters work in this movie. <laughs> I know. Cause, seriously. Cause they, if you, you know, we, we talk shit about DC. Technically, they have more going on in the Marvel movie next year than they do in the DC one. But I'm so. less worried about Marvels. They've been doing it longer. This, I mean, that's true. I was just saying, you know, they do have a shit ton of people going yeah. on in this no, movie. No, they do. It's getting very worrisome. It's starting to sound a lot like Batman versus Superman with all yeah. the cameos. Hopefully, I mean... They have never, you know, screwed anything up before. 
Yeah. So we'll we will we will see. But we yeah, what, see. what I saw of it, I dug. I want to see an actual fucking cameraman who knows. It. <laughs> we got we got five shots, perfect shots of Chris Evans stunt double in the Captain America suit. Yeah. And we got shitty Black Panther suit. Like, why are you even taking photos of the Captain America stunt double? We've seen the costume. <laughs> I don't know. Or Anthony Mackie and Chris Evans like drinking coffee. Bullshit. Like, Anthony Mackie had like the sun in his eyes or something in one photo. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, um, uh, but so other other Marvel news. Um, I like what I'm hearing about this one, Jeff. The more Doctor Strange news that I hear, the more I want to see this movie. Not even just every casting choice is awesome. Every uh, tone inference you hear that they're you're, they're trying to develop while they're preparing for this it all just sounds amazing but we actually have the article up uh, from IGN do you want to read some of the quotes you always make me <laughs> you're closer to the computer Ron <laughs> <laughs> um uh, apparently these quotes are from the cinematographer Ben Davis um whose noted works include such small indie films as Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers Age of Ultron um he described it as a psychedelic grounding and that it's going to be basically Marvel's Fantasia, which is kind of strange considering both are Disney properties. I don't know how it's Marvel's Fantasia when Marvel is Disney and Disney had Fantasia. Anyways, um, but apparently he's not referring to, you know, putting on a star-spangled blue hat and having mops and brooms, you know, do fucking chores on their own. Um, which I would love to see, actually. Uh, Here we can give a cap, Star Spangled. They uh, actually did that in... Did you ever see The Sorcerer's Apprentice? No. Okay, they actually have a scene that's straight out of Fantasia with that. Um, that's what they were getting at. Um, yeah, so basically he's saying this is Marvel's Fantasia in the fact that it is so much different than what they've yes. done before, not in the literal sense of it. Yeah, yeah. It's not in the... I mean. He said that, and everyone's mind immediately jumped to, well, fucking Mickey Mouse was a wizard. So The coolest thing is the quote, most of the work within it is about other dimensions, which w- what we've always said we wanted. Yes. Thank God that they're... And that also tells me, as I told you, if we see another Infinity Stone sometime soon, it is going to be from Doctor Strange. I mean, think of all of like all of the artifacts that you could have in that, either like a ring or an amulet, or I'm starting to sound like I'm talking video games now, but... I mean, just think about all the possibilities where you could fit one in there somehow. And now you're going to talk about other dimensions. It also makes sense um, in the conceptually considering Doctor Strange and the Avengers. If the Infinity Stone is coming out of the Doctor Strange movie, it gives need for them to be able to get in contact with him personally. Yeah. So it gives him more gravitas in relation to them because, you know. Especially if he fucking keeps it. Yeah. They, you know, locks it away in a vault or something, and they come to him for it. Like fucking Thanos attacks him or something. I can't wait for this freaking movie because they, you know, a lot of the the buzzword going around is kind of dark horror esque in this movie, and the everyone dir- they keep bringing in has a background in horror. And the director did Sinister, one of my favorite horror movies of the last few years, and he really, really knows how to create some atmosphere because that Sinister movie. It's exactly the kind of horror we always talk about we like. It's very atmospheric. Yeah. It's grim. It's creepy. It's not in-your-face gore like a lot of horror. Went for, to for a while. Luckily, it's kind of died off and gone kind of back towards more creepy, grim tone setting. But, yeah, I cannot wait for this movie. So apparently, another one of his quotes was, It's all very out there. I can't really say much more about it, I'm afraid. But I think it'll be very interesting, and it's a very dark movie, I'm pleased to say. Which, that's an interesting turn, because depending on... I mean, I don't know how dark they can go. It's going to be PG-13, you know. Um, you can go pretty dark with PG-13 the, nowadays, though. It's just, yeah. The main, the, main, but, the main thing you can't do in PG-13, uh, if you're just talking... You know, non obviously pornographic things is blood. If you notice mm-hmm. in Dark Knight, whole lot of horrible shit happens. There is no blood, so they're able yeah. to keep it PG thirteen. So, but um, what I find interesting is when you think of dark, you think of DC. You know, you when you think of Marvel, you think of light and fluffy. Um, Typically, they destroy have some, an, destroy an entire city, no one dies. I mean, they have you know, like your your uh, your street level Punishers and Daredevils are dark, but yeah. the Avengers stuff is light and fluffy. You're right. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Like yeah. in the Avengers, you just fucking flatten New York with alien invasion, no one dies. You know, so um, that's what you think of when you think of Marvel. So to think of Marvel doing a dark 
version of something. Of course, that also raises the question: What do they consider dark? But I, I think this. I think this is set up to be pretty fucking dark. To be honest with you, with who all they're bringing in to work on it, and that's fine with me. I mean, everything that you can do, and you're talking about sorcery and the occult and everything. Fucking Dormammu looks like Diablo with his head on fire. I mean. You know, and I hope, I've said this before, I really hope that Dormammu doesn't have like a human sounding voice like they give him like in the, the animated movie that's on Netflix right now. He should now. be augmented to sound more yeah, imposing. I, his, he, you should be feeling his voice through the subwoofer behind the screen, you know. So. Hoping for John Noble or Charles Dance from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Both would be really Dude, good. Dude, Noble. Oh my god, that would be fantastic. Um. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, to that one. I'll tell you something I'm not looking um, forward to seeing is I'm gonna have to see it sometime soon, and um, yeah, just not looking forward to it at all. I might well, I might wait to red box it or something. I don't know. You want to pay as little money as possible to yeah. well, you're kind of joining the rest of America because this isn't related to the. Disney side of Marvel, but the Fox side of Marvel, Fox reportedly lost sixty million on Fantastic Four. Damn. <laughs> in the in the age of the superhero film. It failed. Where Guardians of the Galaxy was if not the highest grossing of twenty fourteen, one of the top three. You had Fantastic Four, which even though I am not a big Fantastic Four fan. It is a recognizable name. It is a... What is it about the Fantastic Four that they can't make work? Their quality and their writing and directing. Because in the day and age where um, characters like Iron Man that no one gave a fuck about, Anyone who says they did is lying, because Iron yeah. Man was a C-list character who you knew the name. Yeah. Or um, who else have they done recently that's like that? Um, Captain America has always been popular. I just I was never a fan of him until Winter Soldier. Um, I guess that doesn't make me a fan. But I don't, I, in an age where you can do something like that with a character just through sheer writing and everything. Guardians. Or Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. man. A fucking raccoon. And it's awesome. It's fucking awesome. And you have Bradley Cooper in raccoon form. Also, uh, <laughs> in the in the original Fantastic... He's an Animorphs, Jeff. Well, <laughs> I, I say he the, touched a raccoon. I say the originals, but um, the, I mean the Jessica Alba like yeah. the 2000s ones, because there actually was one horrible one in the 90s. Was there really? Yeah. We need to look at photos, because it's... It's Is hilarious. It really? It's hilarious. How did I never awful hear looking. about this? The uh, the Al- the Jessica Alba ones with Michael Chiklis uh, and Chris Evans before he was Cap. Uh, I always kind of other than Jessica Alba, just kind of be in there for eye candy. They had a good cast. All those guys were, especially Chris See, Evans. I don't, I don't mind Jessica Alba. She's okay. She's she to me her as Sue Storm wasn't as good as the other three were chosen. You know she mm-hmm. she wasn't she wasn't bad, but she was like Chris Evans as Johnny Storm was perfect. He was an yes. awesome Johnny Storm. Yes, he was. Michael Chiklis was a really good thing, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know pronounce his last name, but Eowyn Gruffend I think was Mister Fantastic. I and love that guy. He was a really good choice too, and those uh, the first one's okay. They start losing people in the second one. You make Galactus a goddamn cloud, like Jesus Christ, guys. Well, they. They did that for... Don't you justify that for, Well, they did that because the third one was not supposed to have Fantastic Four in it at all. The third one was supposed to be the Silver Surfer movie. So that's what was supposed to be what brought you in was, you know, they set up, they take a whole movie, kind of like what we expect Marvel to do now, setting up things, and they set up Silver Surfer's origin in the second Fantastic Four, and then they just go straight into Silver Surfer and Galactus. I liked uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, not Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember Morgan Freeman. Dude, right I totally... Now. Morgan Freeman has to be Silver Surfer now. <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know where the fuck I got Morgan Freeman from. Uh... <laughs> You know, from the Matrix. Andy okay. Dufresne did Andy not Dufresne. take the blue pill. 
<laughs> Andy Dufresne, <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne, fucking Morpheus from The Matrix was an awesome Silver Surfer. I thought he was a good voice chosen for it. I, I'm embarrassed to say that I did not know that for the longest fucking time. Geek card handed over. <laughs> so yeah, with with Fantastic Four, they reportedly lost sixty million dollars. The second sub note I have with this is that they're not for sure gonna. Okay, if it was me and I'm Fox, as soon as this movie released, hey Marvel, I'll sell it for seventy five cents in the dollar. They should what what should have happened? This movie should have never been made. They should have just sold the rights. To in my opinion, yeah. What well, sitting? Now- I can't I can't comment since I didn't see it. But what the only other property they have is X Men, right? Yes, X Men is your fucking Avengers, dude. I mean, there's so many different characters. If you want to do spinoffs or whatever, spin them fucking off. You can do what? That's an entire like with universe. Deadpool. Like they're doing yeah. smart with Deadpool. Yeah, uh, with this. The report was some people uh, are from quote unquote internal sources. Now you, this could all be horseshit. You don't know. Some of the reports are that they are wanting to move ahead with the sequel anyway. Which the the Michael Chiklis, Chris Evan ones, uh-huh. those were you know not just dreadful, but they weren't money makers for them. This new one, I think some people would argue that they're dreadful. Yes. This new one was... Okay, I, I, I guess I will right now take just a brief second to say kind of my thoughts on the movie. What this was, was to me, this was kind of like Marvel's Green Lantern. Green Lantern was not good by any stretch of the imagination, but what it wasn't was awful. It was just kind of... And for those that middle. aren't that aren't privy to... Right, don't follow this stuff hardcore, whereas we run a podcast and look into this kind of thing. When you say Marvel's DC, you don't mean Marvel's in the MCU, Disney-owned property that made the Avengers. Yeah, it was this just is Marvel, Marvel in Comics. general. Yes. Um, because this was actually made by Fox, because Fox yeah. actually owns the rights. Yeah, it's... Uh, just Marvel in general across all their properties they have got going among because this was made by the MCU that did Avengers. This would have been another av- version of the Avengers, basically. Yeah, th- this was what dude. They- sell that shit back and give it to Joss Whedon right now. He would do great. the uh, The reason I say it's like Green Lantern, Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern movie, is that it got destroyed too. But what it it just wasn't horrible. It I was it deserved what it got. I I agree. What it was, it was just painfully in the middle. It was so painfully mediocre that it wasn't one that you could kind of have fun with, at laughing at how horrible it was, like Batman and Robin. It was just painfully in the middle. This movie currently has, I believe, like an eight or a nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes and a four on IMDb around there. Good it Lord. is not that bad. Those ratings and percentage on Rotten Tomatoes are what Catwoman with Halle Berry deserves and what Batman and Robin deserves. This movie is not that horrible. It's just painfully mediocre, which a lot of people, I think, are giving it shit because for whatever reason, they thought the trailers looked good. The trailers were shit. The trailers perfectly sold this movie. They were painfully mediocre and dull. That's exactly what they were. They, they totally sold the movie that you were going to get. Anyone who was disappointed and took points away from this movie because they were let down, you were shown exactly what you were getting. Yeah. I just... I just... The fact that, hypothetically speaking, if they try a sequel again, they are fucking morons. Yeah. And the reason that I give They only this, made this movie to keep the rights. Exactly. For whatever reason. They... The only reason I give this story any credence at all is because it's Fox. They're the only people who'd be stupid enough to make another Fantastic Four film <laughs> and not sell the rights well, back. There's other people that make Gotham, so Ex- I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, now, the movie was not Halle Berry's Catwoman bad, but it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen it, Doctor Doom is painfully awkward looking. 
I, I've just seen what's in the trailers and TV spots. And it's kind of sad because some of the things... To me, you, it looks like a little kid's Halloween costume hanging on the rack at Walmart. What kind of sucks is... But man sized instead of Some size. of the things he does in this movie, there are a couple of scenes where you're like, holy shit. Tell me he at least shoots a lightning bolt out of his hand and blows a hole through someone's fucking chest. I'll do you one better. One of his powers is he can basically make your head explode. Oh, that's cool. He walks down a hallway. That's pretty doomful. He walks down a hallway. Spoilers. I mean, it's fucking Fantastic Four. No one gives a shit. <laughs> he walks down a hallway, and then like 12 people's heads just explode all around him. And it's fucking cool. And it sucks that he doesn't look cool, because <laughs> if this doom... That is so metal, he should have been metal instead of a mummy. If this Doom had looked like the one did in the original movies, which was actually kind of a cool costume. He, he looks like he looks like a, like a mummy that fell into a vat of plaster or something to me. It, it was no idea what the fuck they were going for with the look. Literally no idea. This is a character, and I don't want to get too far off on this until we, again, we're going to lightning around and never did. Um, I don't want to get too far off on this, but you got to understand, Dr. Doom is a villain. That's supposed to be so freaking terrible and so freaking powerful. It takes four super-powered people all at once to take him down. And usually they have problems. And usually they struggle to do it. If they even beat him. Yeah. So, uh, for them to not give him an amazing costume design... Dude, it's not even like... It was horrible. He looked horrible. And what really pisses me off is the first two Fantastic Four movies... We're from the era that if you rip something right out of the comic book page, people got pissed. Like, you can't put that on screen. That's right off the comic book page. Dr. Doom was pretty much off the comic book page. I, yeah, I liked his costume. And it worked, but, I mean, I said that was back in the era when you can't do that. That's why X-Men have, like, black suits and stuff. The other reason this movie is getting demolished so bad online is because even though this movie isn't as bad as some of those late 90s, early 2000s movies we've been talking about... It came out in the era of the Avengers and Iron Man and Dark Knight and yeah. Batman Begins and you know so on and it's so forth. It's out of its time, basically. If you had released this film as it is with you know a better looking Doctor Doom in 1998 or 1999, I think it would have been, it would have been fine. Blown people's minds. It would have been blowing blown, blown people's minds because one of the things I genuinely really liked about the movie until it's not uh, it, it loses me in about the third act it kind of falls off the rails at one point mm. the first half of this movie I actually kind of like the idea and the take that I think uh, you know we don't know we don't know who all got what actually into the movie because Josh Trank helped write the script uh, and that segues into our next topic a little bit he helped write the script there are multiple writers on the movie there have been writers come out and say their portions of the movie were if not totally taken out 90% gone. Yeah. So, whoever wrote this portion of the movie, I actually really liked. Because the first half of the movie feels like a Twilight Zone episode. And that's cool. And it's a really cool take because... Well, this is going to sound like an odd question, but I'm just curious. In the movie, when they go to the alternate dimension and there's like lava or whatever, is it green or red? In the actual movie, it's green. Okay, because... I thought that was cool because in the very first TV spots and in the first trailer, it's red, like yeah, it was kind of orangey. Yeah. But in the most recent TV spots, before right before the movie came out, it was green, which is never a good sign when you're seeing changes made at yeah. way past even the eleventh hour. Yeah, the movie was going to be out in two weeks, and they were changing color palettes. It's not a good sign. Yeah, but at the same time, though, I was like, "That's really fucking cool. I want to see some green lava, dude." Yeah, and. That whole first half of the movie, when it's kind of like the Twilight Zone, it's a grim kind of take on the, the Fantastic Four. I see what Four. you did there. I, I do this all the time, <laughs> and I don't even intend to do it. Ben Grimm, if, it's, if no one knows the thing's name. It was a Ben Grimm kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, and then until... Uh, cause halfway through the movie, I'm like, what is everyone kind of shitting on this for? I'm actually kind of liking this movie. And then it all falls apart. <laughs> and then the you found out. <laughs> and then it delivered your answer. So, yeah, um, what I would recommend you do is red box it and pay a dollar fifty for it. <laughs> because while it is, it, it sucks. I would, I would, it sucks compared to what we're used to, and that's the problem with the movie is just it's this, it's the age of the superhero film, and they're yeah. mostly good. That's the problem. 
So yeah, the next thing I, I kind of hinted at was the director of Fantastic Four actually tweeted out, gosh, I don't remember if it was Friday or Saturday. It was at some point over the weekend, I think. He tweeted out, and Ron has the tweet. He's going to read it out. <laughs> Special <laughs> Josh Trank correspondent, Ron Huddleston. It's like on fucking back and like you, humanities or even for the back you are my English or something you are my lovely assistant <laughs> so I thought this was interesting because you and I this alludes to something you and I talked about with Age of Ultron um, because this right here is a perfect example of what you and I talked about the Age of Ultron and I'll explain here after I read the tweet but Josh Trank tweeted and promptly deleted, and thank you for the age of the internet. We have screenshots of all over the internet. There was no point in deleting this tweet. <laughs> no point. Well, if he's going to say it, he should own up to it. I anyway. agree. But a year ago, I had a fantastic version of this. I see what you did there, Josh Trank. And it would have received great reviews. You'll probably never see it, and that's reality, though. Wah, wah. So, in other words... It sounds to me like the part, at least what he's alluding to, is the part that you liked is probably the part he wrote. What is so interesting about this film is that we will never... You know how uh, we've in gaming, we've had this whole kind of breakdown between Konami and Hideo Kojima? Yeah. Well, I don't think we'll ever know, actually, what happened with this, because there are so many conflicting reports. So you have the director, Josh Trank, basically saying... I made a good movie, Fox fucked it. Right. Because this was famous for having reshoots back in, I want to say, January, where they had this kind of complete edit, yeah. this complete cut of the movie, ready to go. Studio doesn't like it, either because you know it rubbed someone up top the wrong way, didn't test well, nobody knows. Josh Trank is saying he made a good movie and it got fucked by the studio couple of the writers are saying a lot of my shit that i wrote got cut out of the movie in, in its entirety mm-hmm. other sources are saying josh trank is kind of talking out of his ass and his movie sucked and that's why the studio felt the need to go in and make changes and we'll never know just like he said the end result was not good yeah and and like you just said what i liked of the movie wasn't those reshoots <laughs> yeah. so in addition to this, and why you know you might want to give Trash Trank a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, is I've seen him make a good movie. Chronicle is a very good movie. I've heard a lot about that, but I've never seen it. What you don't know for sure is that was the strength that of that movie Max Landis alone, because Max Landis is a very talented writer. He, he Josh Trank directed that movie, but Max Landis might have been the heart and soul of it with the script. Hmm. To where the script might have been good enough to where you could take a mediocre director. Because those are the only two movies he's done. <laughs> we won't know if Josh Trank is good, really, until his third film. Yeah. Because this one wasn't good. The one with Max Landis was good. We won't know till later. So, yeah, this is one of those kind of interesting, kind of almost like the Kevin Smith, Tim Burton, Superman fiasco. We might, you know, not know till ten years from now when they get more information out there. Like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. Because it's really interesting. So, this is basically what we said we, what Age of Ultron felt like to us. And then we know after Age of Ultron, Joss Whedon was like, I'm done, I need a break, and kind of stepped away from Marvel. I feel like what has happened here to Josh Trank is what happened to Joss Whedon on Age of Ultron. Although, uh, it's a little bit different just in the fact that we... Can one was one of, successful and the other wasn't. Not only just successful, but we had quibbles about Age of Ultron just in the fact that it felt like 15-20 minutes got cut out and all that got cut out was connecting tissue to make the movie flow. Yeah, What felt like I cut out of this movie was an entire act. Like it, it's <laughs> it's rough at one point so yeah you'll probably watch this on Redbox like 8 months from now but we'll have to talk about it again once you actually get around to seeing it. So, yeah. But yeah we, we know about Fantastic Four for like 20 minutes so we need to move on uh, we have another Fox story, and that is that they are trying to get an X-Men TV show off the ground. It's going to be fucking terrible. Need I remind you, Fox made Gotham. <laughs> Next up, sex subject. And brought to you by the studio that brought you Gotham and the most recent Fantastic Four movie. And canceled Firefly. <laughs> Next subject. <laughs> Deadpool director wants Cable for Deadpool 2. Fuck yeah. You are not familiar with Cable? I thought you were saying they wanted it on cable television when you sent me that text. No geek card for Ron remaining. (laughs) 
Cable, if you're not familiar with him, uh, I guess I shouldn't really spoil his origin. If you're not familiar with him, hand over your fucking geek card, too, apparently. Fuck you, <laughs> listeners, for hand over your geek card. Uh, Cable is kind of like Deadpool in that uh, he's... That's cute. You think we have listeners. <laughs> Cable is kind of like Deadpool in the fact that he is kind of a B, C list, whatever you want to call him, kind of sub character of the Marvel Universe. Always related to X Men shit, usually. Always, usually. I won't uh, spoil his origin in case it's actually kind of a thing in the movie because I don't, I don't know. You know, if you're you're pretty plugged in, if you're not familiar with them, if there is anyone listening, they might not know. So I, I don't want to spoil who he is exactly. He's a very cool character. He's in a lot. Is of, he like Deadpool? Or? No, no, no. He is. He's. He is incredibly serious. Who's he kind of like? Similar. I mean, the I Punisher. Know. He's a hard ass. Okay. Yeah. You already sold me. They play well together because Deadpool's Deadpool and Cable's a hard ass. Right. So they they do they work well or are they usually against each other? Uh. They play what nice? they're what they're going for, I think, in this one, uh, is to kind of make him the villain. Okay. Make them kind of butt heads. What I think is going to happen is it's going to work what I imagine Daredevil and Punisher is going to end up being in that they're against each other eventually, kind of not really. Okay. All for it. Deadpool first movie by the trailers looks awesome. I think it's going to end up being successful because I think it's kind of along the lines of Guardians. It's something you haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. And that's important. Dude, Deadpool, Deadpool in general is something we haven't seen before. Um, uh, I think it was Kevin Smith who made this point. But you go to a convention. You just lost the last of our listeners from what I've been basically understanding. Uh, I believe it was Kevin Smith who said, you go to a Comic-Con or a convention, half the shirts you see are Deadpool. He's an yeah. incredibly popular character, even though he's kind of obscure. Yeah. So I think this movie is going to hit he's hard. probably the most popular obscure character. He's going to hit hard with the fans. And I think because it's so out there with those trailers, they've been really selling it really well. I think it's going to catch, and I think it's going to be successful. And I think we will get a sequel because we've talked about in previous episodes, Hugh Jackman's leaving. They need a flagship character. This could be potentially that flagship if it hits. And I think it's going to hit well. So looking forward to that. We've got to watch the first one first. I can't imagine it being anything but not good. From I just, I'm just so excited. I feel like it's going to have the same effect Avengers had. You know, Not just was it a damn good movie. You'd never seen anything like it before in your life. He also breaks the fourth wall, which they have not gotten and to show yet. That's but a lot of what I'm referring yeah. to. You know, Not only is he crazy and he's fucking killing people and he's like cursing and everything that he says and does, but he's going to be interacting with the audience and breaking the fourth wall. And it's going to be completely unlike anything you've ever seen before. So I think it's going to make a billion dollars and it's going to blow everybody's minds. I can't wait. Even if the script's not solid, I think it'll at least do like guardians of the galaxy where you don't care. And it's, so it's and I think the script has a good chance of being solid because it's written by the Zombieland writers. Yeah. Who so. even kind of did fourth wall breaking stuff with some of the, the graphic effects, you know, yeah. that pops up with the that. rules. Yep. So we will see. I cannot wait. We have one more in the comic related. It's not really superheroes, but it is comic related. And that is Tom Hardy. Uh, a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago, I forget how long ago. Hinted at a mystery DC project that he had upcoming, and that is now indeed, what's inter- What was interesting about that was he was originally cast in Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad and, and then had to drop out because of scheduling conflicts. Yeah, he was originally Rick Flag, and he was replaced by the new RoboCop. His name escapes me. Uh, that tells you everything you need to know about the new RoboCop. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I actually didn't. I didn't hate that movie either, but it definitely wasn't good. So. It was a Josh Trank film. It was tranked. <laughs> that's, that's what I, knew. I like how you. <laughs> I like how you haven't even seen his that movie, <laughs> and you have a verb off of his name. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> but yeah, the movie we're talking about that uh, Tom Hardy is attached to is that he is going to be starring in and producing 100 Bullets, which 100 Bullets is an obscure comic, relatively speaking. For super- obscure is in right now. So, uh, anything comic related, even a little bit, is yeah. where it is in. This uh, this is one of those where it's obscure in title, but once you hear the sell- the selling point of it, it's a fantastic idea. Basically, this is from Vertigo, which is a subsection of DC Comics that focuses on mature titles. DC Comics can't really make anything that your average 
twelve year old can't you know find accessible. Mm-hmm. They kind of have to make everything PG thirteen and under. When you go to Vertigo, that's their HBO. You know, fuck it, whatever, whatever goes goes. One hundred bullets. The plot of it is a mysterious agent. I don't. I don't even know if he's ever uh, identified as who he works for. He will go up to random people at random times, tell them the identity of the person who ruined their lives, give them a gun, and one hundred untraceable rounds of ammunition. That's just a fucking awesome plot. That's an awesome premise. Just an amazing there. premise. So you got Tom Hardy. Who's freaking Tom Hardy? Fucking Mad Max and Bane, dude. I'll see Tom Hardy in anything just for Tom Hardy. I I love him. So, not only is he starring, he's also producing. That shows me he's familiar with this material. He's probably read the comic. He's he has a lot of faith in it. He's got a lot of interest in it because he is not known for producing. I don't even. This might be the first thing he's ever produced. If find all and if there's a script that would tell you how solid the script is, that he's like, I'm fucking producing also. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, so, yeah this is a great premise. This is one of the comics that I unfortunately, as the comic specialist on the podcast, have not gotten around to reading. I definitely want to. Brian Azzarello, fantastic writer. He was the creator of it, along with Eduardo Rousseau, I believe. The article says he was yes. the original artist. Can't wait for that. And that is actually the ending of our movie news segments. But speaking of DC properties, we have some TV news. This is a fun story. Oh, my God. I am so happy to hear this. Now, um, I don't know that we reported on it uh, before, but we did. Uh, we, You and I have talked about it to each other. Uh, basically, when it was reported that Constantine was canceled. I'm still a, sad about this. I'm still I know. This. It, uh, it hurts. Um, when Constantine was canceled, about a week or two after that, the people involved with Arrow had said that they had been trying to get a Constantine-Arrow crossover. Even though they're different networks, they've been trying to get a Constantine-Arrow crossover off the ground. And they said, even though Constantine's been canceled, they are still interested in doing that as long as whoever the fuck they need to talk to now that it's canceled is interested in doing that. Stephen Amell was also pushing for this yes. on Twitter. And Matt Ryan, was, as we know, was pushing for anything that kept that show alive. Um, we got something interesting on the internet, and I am going to play this for you now. Um This is from our special Constantine correspondent, Matt Ryan. Constantine himself. So this is a message for all of you Hellblazer and uh, Constantine fans out there. And it's also a message to all of you Arrow fans. The rumors are true. John is coming to Star City. I'll see you this fall. That is fucking amazing. That was so fucking cool. And it almost gives you, like, geek goosebumps a little bit. You almost want to play it again, you know? (laughs) But, yeah, no, that was fucking incredible. So, Constantine's back. Thank God. I would have preferred the show continue, but it was looking like it was just dead in the water for life. Maybe he'll just start popping into everything. Maybe he'll be in Flash next. Uh, You You uh, could. Hell, make him a main in uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. You know, you could do that. Yeah, you really could. Yeah, uh, why not? He's he's at the moment more popular than any of their current cast members, honestly. I mean, it kind it, of had the Firefly effect a little bit where it got more popular as it was being canceled, especially over the battle to keep it alive, you know, and all the, the buzz it got on Twitter and that was, Yeah, that was a big factor uh, in getting it resurrected because uh, Mark Guggenheim, who's one of the Arrow showrunners and creator. I think he was the one that was saying that, you know, talking about how they were interested in doing that. And I, I think he uh, announced that... They don't know how much he's going to be appearing, but they love crossing people over. They love doing shit like that. So I, That's perfectly obvious from the Flash and Arrow crossovers. I, I wouldn't be shocked if he pops up in Flash. If he, I would really put him in as much uh, Legends of Tomorrow as possible. I really hope. I mean, I, I understand it's probably going to be like a one-episode thing. but It'll be a glorious episode, though. They had even talked about... At one time, maybe even looking at CW since they have Supernatural and stuff, I would be fine with that if it just came back in some form. And this gets its foot in the door at CW. Yeah, uh, what's going to happen uh, very possibly 
is what's going to happen with Punisher on Daredevil. Yeah. I think Punisher on Daredevil is going to hit and hit hard, and then where he's going to get his own show sooner rather than later. Yeah. The ratings Constantine was getting on NBC, I believe it was NBC. Yes. Is probably higher than anything but Arrow and Flash that's on CW. Why yeah. the fuck would you not? They're even making a spinoff of, of Legends of Tomorrow, which is like the B-list characters that are in all of the shows currently going. Yeah. So why the hell would you not make a dude who, you know, led and already, you know, it wasn't really successful for local CBS, Fox, NBC standards, but CW would take that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Make him, make him his own show. What I was really excited about was the rumors that it was going to go to sci-fi. Make it a little darker. Or, or chiller. Yeah. Because they can not only make it darker, but those two stations also make made for TV movies. So you would get made for TV Constantine movies that has the stars from the show being in those roles. That would be fucking amazing. Yeah. So but. bring on more, hey, more Matt Ryan, man. Even if, even if it's one episode, which it won't be, they'll find other ways to make him. I, I hope I hope it has the Felicity effect where she was supposed to be a one episode thing and becomes a regular. And they kept bringing her back because everybody loved her. And then they finally just said, "Fuck it," you know, get write her a paycheck. And you you don't know who else in. they should bring in too is bring back the Spectre guy that they were going some cool places Dude, with that character. Gordon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they need to bring him in. Um, apparently, a lot of that was Matt Ryan pushing for Spectre. That's why we got him as much as we did. It'd be cool if he was able to kind of and you know spoilers for the season finale of Constantine. But the the Spectre ending that they did, the guy that plays the guy that eventually becomes Spectre and Matt Ryan told the writers we want to do this ending instead and the writers are like "Mm, okay and that's the reason why we got the specter ending it was an awesome ending yeah especially if that was what they were going to leave out on that was an amazing ending looking forward to more matt ryan and more constantine man i am so freaking excited i want to see oh man i kind of want them to cross over the flash now also because while you know, Arrow and Constantine are both dark characters. I want to see him clash with the Flash. That, that sounded like a porn. <laughs> um, <laughs> he could actually kind of, with some of his powers, he could kind of fuck up the Flash. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, he could. And, you know, it just everything. I feel like Constantine would be like, no, nah, fuck him. You know, we, we got to kill him as long as we can take care of this. And Flash would be like, no, man. And they would go back and forth. I thought that'd be really cool. In any way, they, any way, shape, or form, and they want more Matt Ryan, I am game as well. Yeah, I would just love every, all the shit Constantine's seen, and then him to react like Diggle did to Flash's powers. Like freaking out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh yeah, just freaking out. Like, he sees fucking demons and exorcisms, and, but no, that's, that's what gets him. That's what gets him. Oh man. Speaking of Arrow, Arrow himself <laughs> is a complete and utter badass. <laughs> Uh, we're going to kind of lightning round the majority of the segments because we're running a little long today for what we actually intended to... Lightning round again? Yeah. So we're going to try lightning round again. Stephen Amell has been having a Twitter feud with a WWE. I, I believe uh, he's WWE. I'm not into wrestling, so I could be fucking all this up. Uh, the guy's name, the wrestler, is Stardust. That's his wrestling <laughs> name. He not have- to be confused with the Robert De Niro movie. He has been having a back and forth with Stephen Mill. I'm not sure what got started, but they've been having a Twitter war for like weeks and weeks now. So what happened is Stephen Mill set up this whole thing where he was going to be present at WWE Raw Monday night. And he's in the crowd watching the wrestling match. Stardust goes out into the crowd and kind of shoves Stephen Mill in the face a little bit to instigate it a little bit. You know, you can, you can tell it's all set up, but who cares because it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Stephen Mill proceeds to fucking Bruce Lee his way jumping over into the wrestling match and then tackles his ass like an NFL linebacker and it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah, no, it was, it was something else. Watch the video. YouTube, Stephen Amell, WWE. It's an amazing video. Yeah, I mean, it's all fake. Doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter. All awesome. Yeah. And Stardust's costume totally belongs on a CW show, I'm just going to say. I disagree. I don't think it's cool enough to be on a CW <laughs> superhero show. <laughs> In other CW news, Wally West has been cast for Flash Season 2. What um, is his name? I'm going to go with Keenan Lonsdale. Good call, because I wouldn't know. <laughs> K-E-I-Y-N-A-N, if you're IMDBing him. Lonsdale. Um, what has he started before a run? <laughs> My lovely assistant. 
Jesus. Um, Insurgent. Haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. Uh, here's the thing. See, Can't even tell you if it's the first or second in the series. I have some issues with some of the casting in Arrow in certain parts. <coughs> Laurel. <laughs> Everyone in The Flash is awesome. Yeah. Everyone in The Flash was perfectly casted. I love all the side characters. Uh, even Iris, who in most cases we would be the annoying character in the superhero show. She's even not that bad. Well, that's because... It's CW, a lot of Arrow and Flash is the same people, and you have Laurel in Arrow. So, next to that, no other actor can do wrong. This is very true. So, you know, but, yeah, no, um, it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, It's a bit of a spoiler as well. Uh, Yeah, Um, this actually popped up a few weeks ago. I didn't want to report on it because I would have liked to have... You're the one that put it in the fucking notes, Jeff. No, before, a few weeks ago, I remarked when we were talking about the casting of someone else for this stuff, I think Jake Garrick, this popped up too, I thought it was a spoiler, I would have rather not known this, but it's fucking CW, we knew Black Canary Chick was coming back like a year before this, even, this show was even named. Yeah. Jesus Christ, CW, you are almost as bad as Suicide Squad at keeping your shit under wraps. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we need to be lightning rounding this shit. Is there anything else you wanted to say about Wally West? No. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we are getting Wally West and Jay Garrick, really, really cool members of the Flash universe. I wonder what they're going to do. This is the one thing I do want to say. I wonder what they're going to do because the Barry Allen we have in the CW Flash is more Wally West mixed with Barry Allen. It's like they did the fusion dance where Dragon Ball Z became one person, but Barry Allen's personality took no, over. No, you got your nerd card back. Because he, he's more Barry Allen, but he is goofy like Wally West. So... Is this going to be the other way around? That's a good call. I don't know. What I would do is I would just make him just a step goofier. You know, yeah. just make him a little bit kind of half Barry, half Cisco. I want my Justice League cartoon Flash. I would make him like half Barry, half Cisco. His name is Wally, for God's sake. Give me <laughs> my Justice League cartoon Flash. And on that note, <laughs> uh, that was actually, I think, the last... Uh, superhero or comic related thing we had to talk about but we have some other TV news to get through and we are in full lightning round mode for this one Sensate was renewed for season 2 neither of us have watched it hooray I've heard it's good we'll see it's from the Wachowski siblings so <laughs> I still laugh when you say siblings I have to I have to force myself to say siblings or I accidentally say brothers and I feel bad so that's, that's the story behind that because one of them pulled a Caitlyn Jenner for those that don't know yeah Next story, uh, I actually want to watch Sensei at some point. And it's, I on, do too. and it's on Netflix. It's a little sci fi esque show, so we'll see if it's good. I want to watch it too. I was kind of, for like a half second, always um, confuse it with Hateful Eight. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, next story, it's one of our favorite shows, is Game of Thrones. <laughs> and this story. is ha- fucking I, awesome. I had to include it because it's just, it's an incredibly fucking awesome story. A Staten Island attorney. <laughs> I can't even read the article header without laughing. Demands motherfucking trial by combat. <laughs> and his justification was basically like, you haven't fucking told me I can't motherfucking trial by combat. <laughs> oh, the world we live in. What a time to be alive. Oh, my God. Yeah, most of this article is kind of over my head. I, I kind of, I, I, I think I summarized it. His whole thing is, and it's, it's, well, it's the, the fucking trend has been, Ron, read this. Did you do your homework? Read well, this fucking paragraph. I pay you to be my lovely assistant. I don't know why you were complaining now. <laughs> On the Vanna White is what you're telling yes. me of. There will be expletives. Yes. There are worse jobs to have. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, his, his whole thing was, Technically, it's not illegal to have a trial by combat, so... <laughs> it was obviously a giant joke. Don't care. It was fucking awesome. Yes, it I was. love this guy. Probably the coolest attorney. It must be. Of all time. So, good on you, dude. Speaking of trial by combat, <laughs> Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones famously and infamously recorded voice work for the video game Destiny. They decided... Nah. 
<laughs> he, no, the problem with his voice work in Destiny, and it's not his fault, it was honestly just how he was directed, is he was directed to be incredibly flat in his tone and not get, excite, and not get excited over anything because he's a fucking robot. Which begs the question, why did you get Peter Dinklage, the coolest smartass on TV as Tyrion Lannister, <laughs> to have no personality, have no personality. <laughs> only Bungie can manage that. His entire voice work... This is Destiny we're talking about. His entire voice work was scrapped from Destiny and replaced by Nolan North, famously Nathan Drake, and and every other fucking animated thing, video game or cartoon. Because ever. video game. Because video game. Video game equals Troy Baker and Nolan North. Because video game. Yep. Uh, what I thought interesting about this was one of the uh, additional headlines was it wasn't just his original dialogue being re-recorded. They were adding new storylines because Destiny didn't have a story. So they're adding storylines. They're adding a story to <laughs> Destiny, finally. <laughs> they even realized their game had no story to the point where they were like, man... We should really add this. Maybe we might want to have a storyline to our <laughs> video game. So I what I should have done is had Telltale Games do it. <laughs> if I was Peter Dinklage, I'd be incredibly annoyed by this entire thing. But at the end of the day, no, he's he got, not. He got his fucking paycheck. He got a he paycheck. Who gives a fuck? So, yeah. speaking of Game of Thrones, Littlefinger in Game of Thrones, whose name is escaping me, it makes me sad because he's one of my favorite actors. Uh, Aiden Gillen. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. Might as well change his name to Littlefinger because he's fucking awesome in that show. One of the coolest characters. Yeah, he is Lord Baelish. He is going to be starring in a bit of an ambitious take on a video game made, and that is Quantum Break. This sounds pretty interesting to me. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of details out based on what we were able to find or not find. However, you want to look at it. Um, about story or anything like that. But basically what I could get was the main guy has powers basically like Nicolas Cage in Next with the ability to manipulate it somewhat, not just see short glimpses into the future. And the antagonist in the plot is supposed to have the ability to actually like fucking see the future. Yeah, the antagonist has the ability to see in the future. And uh, the antagonist is Littlefinger and anything Littlefinger's in I literally watched the first Maze Runner movie just because Littlefinger is in the sequel as the villain <laughs> yeah anything yeah, that got me interested I'm not gonna lie Any anything these people I love from Game of Thrones that are popping up in other shit I'm down yeah that, that show just has it's hooks in me so bad I am down for anything especially Littlefinger one of my favorites so fucking good he was also really good in The Wire so he's been around for a while but this has been I think his real kind of breakout role so it's cool to see him, you know, get popping other stuff. The uh, the really cool thing about this though was that this had a tie-in TV show, and they weren't dicking around with the, t- the TV tie-in show. From what they were explaining, some of the people in the creative part of it were comparing it to kind of episodic things, as in the game is kind of chapter one, which part of the game will be chapter one. TV show will be like chapter two, so it's a continuous storyline. It's not. Hmm. It's not. A spinoff tie-in type thing. It's part of the story, you know. This, okay. So I'm I'm interested in that. The unfortunate thing is this is going to ex- be really good or really terrible. Yeah. Um. I mean, they were able to get some pretty good people on board. The Littlefinger guy is pretty popular right now. I'm sure he wasn't, you know, incredibly cheap to get. Yeah. Um. Dominic Monaghan was one of the other ones from Lord of the Rings, most famously as Mary. So they have, you know, some people with some recognizable faces and names. So you know interested in it unfortunately quantum break will only be available on xbox one of course so me and ron will never ever play it <laughs> and we have one more gaming news and that's actually be the end of the episode and i'm gonna let you take this one away because this is all your department my lovely assistant Ev- <laughs> evidently um it seems like we get most of our gaming news now from um Fucking like LinkedIn updates and job postings and stuff. Well, there was a little job posting on the Blizzard Career site. Um, I just just said a quick side note. I actually put on my LinkedIn mediocre podcast host got fired from my job like the next day. It's <laughs> fucking nightmare. Um, listing was for an art director on an unannounced project, which is immediately followed up by. Candidates need to have a passion for games with a deep understanding of the Diablo franchise. Yes, Ron has submitted a resume. 
Yep, yep. Yeah, pick me. Ooh, 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 pick me. Um, so it seems they're well, the immediate conclusion everyone has jumped to is a new expansion for Diablo three. I'm not entirely sure that's ever going to happen. Um, just because Diablo three doesn't make them any money unless it's someone buying a copy of the game. It's not like subscription based, like World of Warcraft. They do make money off the expansions, though, right? They sell them for like forty bucks. They do, but I mean, you buy it and then they don't make any more money from that person ever again. So yeah, um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's more likely they're just going to keep patches going, or whether it's going to be something to do with that, or like you said off mic, maybe. Something more lore based, like uh, the Book of Cain, the Book of Tyrael were, or something like that. Um, so, I don't know. I would love to see another expansion. If they do, I think the Scovos Isles would be a good one. That seems to be, I did a little bit of research. It seems to be what a lot of people on the internet are hinting at. Um, just because the Scovos Isles are mentioned by Tyrael, the Archangel of Justice, or former Archangel of Justice, in, um, in the game, in adventure mode. Um, Tyrael, what, what, what's his fuck? I don't know. It's a character they introduced in Act 5. I've only played through Act 5 like twice on story mode. But um, he, Tyrael says that he's worried about the Haradrim mages that they sent to the Scovos Isles um, to that character. And that character responds with something like, yeah, we haven't heard from them in a while or something. I don't remember exactly what his dialogue is. But... The Scobos Isles were actually originally part of Diablo 3, and then it was later removed because they didn't feel like it fit into the story. And if I remember correctly, and if we did have listeners, I would get promptly corrected if I'm wrong. Um, in Diablo 2, the Amazon character that you can play as is from the Scobos Isles. Okay. So that would be something pretty interesting. Maybe it would, as an expansion, it would either introduce... Like a new class, or at least a new NPC, or something that would be based from the Amazon warriors in Diablo Two. So, be pretty interesting, but I don't think it's personally going to happen. But God, I would love to see it because I fucking love the Diablo franchise and its lore. If it gets confirmed, it'll be because of some idiot post on his fucking LinkedIn, like yeah. every, like fucking Fallout Four, and there was something else recently. There, there was I something forget. else I don't remember. I forget. What. Yeah, I'm sure we reported about it. I don't think it was a... Uh, uh, fuck, I can't even remember the name of the yeah. game. I haven't finished yet. What was it? Last of Us? Yeah, Last of Us 2. Wasn't it, oh, was it? you forgot <laughs> the name. <laughs> we are fucking done professionally, mate. <laughs> fucking done professionally. <laughs> <laughs> On that note... <laughs> That's as good a place as any. Yeah. Thanks for uh, sticking with us for this cursed ass podcast. Oh my god, I need to, I need to fucking Tylenol. <laughs> Our first podcast with edits. If anything seems strange to you, we had two events during this podcast that were fucking edited out, and it was already our second take. I was attacked by a spider. That happened. Yeah, and then you choked on your water, and before we even, <laughs> and before we even, <laughs> before we even started, my mic wasn't even fucking on. And we're just sitting here la da 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 for about ten minutes before we realized. Thank God it wasn't a half hour or the whole damn thing before we... Well, I don't know, but some people them. might call it an improvement. They don't get to hear us. So. <laughs> yeah, if you'd like to check us out more, you can find us on YouTube. Just search for our channel. It's under There Will Be Expletives. We recently started a Let's Play series. You can actually find our first video under our channel. Like and subscribe. Our first video was Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Because Topical is always on. Yes. Fuck yeah. It was a lot of fun. We're going to be doing some more Let's Plays coming up. So definitely subscribe. No one's listening to this. Definitely subscribe to the <laughs> YouTube channel. If you'd like to see more of our updates, we post some news to Twitter at TWBE Podcast. And also some updates to Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash TWBE podcast. I am Jeff. I'm Ron. And this has been one fucking cursed ass episode of There Will Be Expertives. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Are you being attacked by something? Yeah. I saw. I see it running across the ground. It's a fucking spider. There it is. That's my fucking phone case. <laughs> Fuck you. Did I get it? I have no idea. It was heading towards my foot, so I hope you did. Um, what the fuck were we talking about? We were cutting all of this out. Uh- <laughs>